Before you can fit the engine, you need to remove this cross member. Also, what we're going to do before we slide the engine into place, we're going to fit the electric water pump. We are using a Davis Craig electric water pump to circulate the cooling water around the system. It's a bit of a fiddly job as the pump is located in the right hand side bin behind the firewall. Pierre applies some Muti to help the rubber pipes slide into place. And finally, we fit the rubber engine anti-vibration mounts and the attachment plates. The engine is secured, balanced and lifted with the hoist and gantry and then slowly manoeuvred into place. This is another tricky job where patience and communication between Jean and the team are key. Okay, stop there for now. Forward. Forward. A little bit more. How does it look by you? I'm good. But finally, she's in place. The next step, fire her up. So, We've got 430 horsepower engine in here with its gearbox. With the engine and gearbox in place, you can now refit this. If you recall, this had to be removed for us to fit. So you can put a cross member back on, put your shock absorbers back on, put these rods back in, close all this up again, and then let's start on the engine. The very first thing that your engine's gonna need is fuel. So we've made up a, a temporary fuel tank here. So these two lines are your fuel in and your fuel return. You've got a fuel filter. The filter needs to be earthed. As for the water system, there are one or two things to take note of. You, you need what we call a steam pipe, which is the pipe from the highest point of the engine. And at that side, there's a small bleeder pipe. So that bleeder pipe, it's the one that we had already. We, we bent it to point that way. So now we're adding hose to that and we're bringing it all the way up to the header tank. The header tank itself feeds the water system. So on the side here, we've got a feed. So that water pipe is connected to the one side of the water manifold. And on the other side, it goes down, goes through the chassis to the radiator. The water from the radiator comes all the way back, goes up, goes to our water pump, and goes in at the other side of the water manifold. If there's no water leaks, put the cap on, and she can stand here ready for that initial run, running in period. The engine also has breather pipes. So the, the tappet covers have got breathers on them. The other thing that we have, again, when turning the intake manifold, we disconnected one of the breathers off the intake manifold. So that breather is now sitting on the opposite side. And it's sitting over here. So what we're doing is we've made up this pipe that you can see here, this aluminium pipe, because we need to feed the breather from the opposite side. On this build we have the stock standard ECU that gets supplied with the engine from Chevy Performance. The plugs in the loom are all color coded. Blue goes to blue, black to black, and gray to gray. On the engine you get supplied from the factory as well with your crank sensor, your knock sensors. All of this is part of the loom that comes from the factory. So what we have over here is another little relay box 
Um, because we have a separate ECU that runs the water pump, we need a relay to switch the fan on. And then also we need an ignition supply relay to supply both the water pump ECU and the main ECU. This is the water supply ECU. It's a Davies Craig water ECU and electrical water pump. One of the things that your engine will also need is obviously air, apart from fuel and everything else, it needs air and it needs to know how much air. So when you buy your ECU, you will find that you've got a MAF sensor, which is reading the amount of air coming towards the engine and into the engine. You need distance for the air to flow. They, they say they want at least six inches of clear flow of air for this guy to read. You need an air filter. And then the other thing that you need, you can still you can see them here, but it's maybe easier to explain. You need two little intakes, which are going to be sucking that tappet cover fumes. So Pierre and Zarin will fit this for us now, and then we'll go to the next step. Here are the two push-pull cables for your gear shift. So the top cable is fore and aft, and the bottom cable is left and right. Because it uses so much energy to crank this engine, we take the plugs out so there's no compression. We're gonna swing it, and we're gonna look on the oil gauge to see that needle come up. And that needle's gotta show you've got oil pressure. At this point, we actually disconnect the ECU so that it doesn't get confused while we crank the engine. We've made a temporary console just so that we can switch ignition on, so we can turn the engine and we can look at pressures. So, if we switch on, we've got power, the gauge is happy, and I'm gonna start cranking, and we're gonna watch to make sure this guy starts climbing up. There we go, there you go. And then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put all the plugs in, we're gonna put the exhaust system on, and only then will we fire. These stunning stainless steel headers are not standard, but they are available and they look one million times nicer than the standard Chevy cast iron option. Make sure the ignition cables are all secure, Because this is a first test start, we only temporarily connect the silencer box. And finally, we make up two breather pipes for the tappet covers and connect them into the air intake. So after all the chassis assembly, after suspension assembly, after engine and gearbox being mated and it's now in the car, we're at a point and I, <laughs> I must say I'm a little bit nervous. Um, we're ready to turn the key. So we've got fuel, we've got ignition, we've got water, we've got oil pressure. So, um, let's see. Everything happy and...